Sorry, I just, I, I really like this song. It's just so happy and exciting, and it just makes the city feel alive and makes you excited to explore it, and I would be remiss if I didn't gush about it just a little bit. Hey, everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon White version. Last time, we arrived in the hustling, bustling Castilia City, and we saw some interesting sights already on just one road and one plaza and one little tiny lane that might also count as a road. I don't know, but... Point is, we barely explored any of the city and we already saw loads. So this time, we're gonna continue our exploration of the area by not staying in the city whatsoever. Yeah. Outside of this gate are some things that are very worth your time. Similar to how we explored Pinwheel Forest before taking on the gym leader, we're gonna be exploring this area. Maybe I should try to find a Pokemon in Route 4 to catch. I think that sounds like a pretty decent idea, sir. So I think I'm gonna take your advice. Um, if we go north enough, I think, yes, uh, this guy, yeah. Hey, trainer, there's a bit of a problem up ahead, sorry, but you can't pass now. You should go kill some time by challenging the Castilia City Gym. It's almost like you know exactly what I am doing with my life. I'm not predictable, not in the slightest. You can't go that way, but you can go off to the side and encounter some Pokemon over here in this deep sand, something that we have not seen up to this point. And I'm just gonna be straight with you, I'm not even gonna beat around the bush whatsoever or be like, hey, let's talk about the encounters in here while I mysteriously run around in circles in some tall grass, or tall sand in this case. There are a couple of Pokemon that I wanna catch in this area for various purposes. Sorry, Scraggy, but you're not one of them. I'm sorry to cut you down. <laughs> Finally you show up! You are a Pokemon with a rather intriguing type of ground and dark, as well as some very intriguing abilities, and I think you would make a great addition to the team, so let's catch you! Gosh, how would I have ever survived without that Quick Claw activating in this scenario? I don't know! Uh, do I want to hit you again? Santum? <laughs> if I laugh at it and you actually get the- People in glass houses. Ouch. <laughs> okay, uh, Ottawa, do your thing and tank there. I don't know if I want to hit it with anything. It's weak to Fury Cutter and I no longer have Tackle. I guess you're too strong for your own good. Let's, let's try to catch right now. What do I want to get you in? Uh, always a tough call because you know this decision it affects your creative mindset and its creative mindset for the rest of both of your lives I tried getting You actually do match the colors on the ultra ball pretty well. You're more of a brown than a than a yellow, but I Think you'd look good in it. Yeah You also got pretty high health right now, so maybe just not to risk it will use something with a higher catch rate come on one two Three! Sandile is ours. Welcome to the team. I've been really excited to use this Pokemon. It's probably the most commonly used Pokemon that I'll be using. Um, but I still wanted to show it no less because it's one of my absolute favorites. It moves along below the sand surface except for its nose and eyes. A dark membrane shields its, uh, sh shields its eyes from the sun. That's what we call the inspiration for mankind to invent sunglasses. I do not have any ideas for what to nickname this adorable little... Look at his little smirk, this adorable little smirk face right here. So, either by responding to the Facebook post for this video, or by using hashtag Chugamon on Twitter, I would like to hear what you have to say for naming this Pokemon. Your nickname is due 24 hours after this video goes up. So, don't go leaving comments, like, many times after it and wonder why I didn't pick yours. I'm sorry. Trying to be more specific about those deadlines. Uh, so we'll not nickname it for now. And time to see that it has an adamant nature, am I right? With how lucky I keep getting with these. Let's see. Relax nature. Minus speed plus defense? Um, okay, not horrible, but not quite what I expected, to be honest. All right, well, I, I don't mean to sound entitled. I really don't mean that I didn't expect it in that way. I just mean not the first thing that I think of when I think of a sand dial. Not really good or bad, just kind of middle, middle of the road, I guess. Bit of a double-edged sword. 
That is not everything that I want to do on this route, though. Even though I wanted to catch a new team member really badly, and that was our biggest reason for coming up, there is one other Pokemon that I want to catch, if only for something kind of stupid. And actually, I didn't check your IV. You're proud of its power! Wow, so its highest IV is attack. Okay, I changed my mind. You're pretty lucky. It's also the first male of our party, not something that I thought I'd ever say by the third party member, but there you go. There's your inspiration for a nickname. That's the kind of Pokemon that it is. While I was hunting for the second Pokemon I want to catch, Ottawa grew to level 24. There you are! Umaka. I wanted to catch Daramaka while we are here, and don't worry, we will be going over the encounters on this route soon enough. I just kind of didn't want to do so quite yet because we had a lot to talk about getting in here that was not totally related to that. Ouch. Double ouch. That actually hit decently hard for what it was. Can your double damage make you worthwhile? A little bit. All right, I don't want to hit you again with Fury Cutter in the same turn, and... I guess I could use Focus Energy to disrupt the uh, continuity of turns right there, but let's just throw a Pokeball. Yeah, just a regular old Pokeball. I wanted to catch Daramaka for no reason other than to show you its Pokedex entry. I know that I could just tell you what its entry says without catching it, but this one deserves to be seen under the most natural of circumstances. Daramaka's droppings are hot! So people put them in their clothes to keep themselves warm. <laughs> Think about that every time you walk past someone on these busy city streets. <laughs> you will never look at this world the same way again. <laughs> I just really had to show that because it's one of the most spectacular Pokedex entries ever written. <laughs> now, um, that's not everything we're doing around here. Where, oh, there's my repel. You know what? Let's uh, let's use the select button to move that up to the top of the list. Again, these snappy fast menus, just like the snappy fast battle system, doesn't waste your time. Doesn't mean you have to play a stupid little mini game spinning the stylus around on the touch screen to scroll over to the item that you want. Thank goodness. Uh, let's uh pull out. Okay, yeah, I, I know that there are hidden items around here. I'm gonna go into this house. Ah, I can't wait until my sand dial evolves into glug glug glug. You can heal on this route any time that you like without having to go back into town. With how big Castelia City is, you might want to do that. It might be very helpful to you. Especially if you have your Blitzel just get utterly destroyed by a wild Pokemon. Huh. Can I... Oh, gosh, why is the repel always going to wear off right when I'm about to do that? Ultra Ball! Suddenly very happy that I chose what I chose. There are some trainer battles on this route. I don't really want to advance too far into it. Uh, mainly just wanted to grab an item really quick and another item down here. Uh, we could battle these trainers, but I just don't want to spend a whole lot of time. Pearl, that is another selling item that I recommend that you don't sell right now because of things that we had spoiled for us by a certain spoiler, spoiler, mix, spoiler pants. Into this great music backing us up. This is the welcome to the world of Pokemon theme. Every route's got, every region's got to have at least one route that has this song on it. It's always just such a nice detail whenever you hear it pop up again. Uh, it's such an upbeat song. I'm going to try to sneak past you guys just to kind of get as many items as I can before we go back to town, just because there are a lot of, there are a lot of them just free for the taking. Uh, let me turn that back on. Just realized it was off. Is it there? Is it here? No, it is down there. TM41 Torment. That'll make it so that your opponent cannot use the same attack twice in a row. Can be very good at disrupting their damage output. Maybe making it so... Output? What am I, suddenly Scottish? Time to take you down. It's very good at disrupting damage output. Makes it so that they can't buff up quite as fast as they would normally be able to. Can be pretty good in disrupting whatever their strategy is that there's a Pokemon you particularly hate fighting. You can grab an Aether right there as well, and, um, I think the last item here, yep, better have it, it's Burn Heal. I think that about does it for everything that I want to grab on this route, so I guess now I'll meet you back in town. I thought that said Tired Worker should head to the Rehab House by Castilia City for a moment. So there's not only some great Pokemon and great items, but also a lot of opportunities for experience points up there on that route. The reason why I didn't want to fight them right away is that I recommend before all else, especially if you're catching a team member up there like I am, you come back into town and you go to the battle company. They welcome talented trainers after all, I didn't see any such sign welcoming us up there on Route 4. 
People who work in this building have Pokemon battles, not opinion battles. You appear to be strong, but if you go upstairs, please be careful. I would say if that's only how all political disputes were settled, though, but then again, I kind of feel like that's what Team Plasma is trying to force, so I'll bite my tongue on that one. Every morning, my Pokemon wakes me up with wake-up slaps, so I always look like a wreck. But I appreciate its good intentions, so I'll work my hardest to provide for it, today as always. We all feel that. The cat's always scratching our faces so we get up and go feed him, yet we work hard for them every day. Just like I try to do every day for mine. Uh, so this place, for all we know, is a three-story building instead of a two-story building. Quite the improvement, wouldn't you say? I don't... Wait, no, you actually are a battler. Not what I was expecting. Okay, didn't mean to get into a fight with you. I wanted to actually go up to the 55th floor. I thought this was just a place to talk to people, but it is not. Up on the 55th floor are a few trainers. And a Hyper Potion. I'll gladly take an item that restores 200 HP twice in one day, possibly three times if I get very lucky. You want to beat every single one of these trainers. Extremely worth your time and not just for the experience, and that is why I didn't want to battle anyone else before going here and doing this. To help scientific progress, please lend me a hand. You're not gonna chop it off with a scalpel, are ya? I don't know, you scientists! Generally when people donate themselves to science, they kinda, you know, end up separated into parts. Steve! Uh, never mind. Anyway. Oh, uh, we're gonna have to cut things a little bit short. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I talked to this guy and, uh, quickly it became apparent you don't have to fight every trainer in here, just the one that's standing guard in front of him. And I kind of wanted to make a big deal out of this fight, because that man was guarding his janitor, Jeff, and he's got Trubbish. Trubbish, huh? You think it's funny using a trash bag Pokemon? I mean, well, he is a janitor, though, so yes. Yes, it is, actually. I quite approve of you having that Pokemon, but we'll get to you later, Trubbish. Oh, we'll tear into you later. And not just to make your arms have more shoulder room. You know what I mean. Okay, so I guess... Against a poison type, why not make this Sandile's first battle? We saw it had a pretty mean sand tomb on it, so let's give it a go, maybe? Uh, this is not going well whatsoever. Ouch. Uh, the level disadvantage is obvious, as the Pokemon Stadium announcer would say. Okay, yeah, I... Let's see, you did 24 damage in total. I could probably take one more hit. Go for the torment, but you're about to go down anyway, so acid spray. Well, I got the same basic effect of using torment right there, but special defense harshly fell. I need to get out of here quick. Could the sand tomb please do the job this turn through some miracle? No, it's sand tomb, okay. Sand tomb is lame. I don't like it hardly at all, so can't say I'm too surprised. Let's go to Ottawa. Man, this battle's actually giving me a little bit of a hard time right off the bat. I know that I'm training up a Pokemon, so I really shouldn't be all that surprised by it, but still, just sheesh. Don't have any sort of buffing move that I'd want to use like Flame Charge. That Toxic Spikes is going to make it awkward for me going forward. That'll make it so that any time that I send out another Pokemon, I instantly get poisoned. If he were to lay it down twice, it would instantly badly poison me. But I think in this situation, I'd actually prefer the Badly Poison, because that starts at 1 16th, whereas regular Poison is always consistently 1 8th damage. With Sandile being low on health, that kind of cuts him off to me for the rest of the battle. Uh, let's go for Razor Shell. Haven't seen a Minchino in a while. For those that don't know, uh, Professor Juniper's Minchino can actually be a shiny, and there's no way to obtain it. I feel horrible for anyone who had that happen to them. Even more horrible than I feel for people who, who ran into two shinies in a double battle and had to choose, which is saying a lot because I weep for those souls every time I think about that. I disguise myself as a janitor because I like to know what kinds of trainers come here. I had a good time battling you. As a token of my esteem, please accept this. He gives you the experience share. Not the broken easy mode that people yell at you for using today. No. This is the equipable version that just splits the experience in half as if the Pokemon participated in the battle. Um, so this is a godsend when training up a weak little old sand dial that has a lot of potential, so let's do this. I want to slap that on you right away, and I think now, because there's so many trainers that we can battle inside this building on both of the floors that you can go up to, I'm feeling it's time for a training montage. 
And of course, a training montage would be the perfect opportunity to go over the new encounters on Route 4 that we glossed over for a moment. And of course, where else would we start than justifying why I chose Sandile? Man, this is a Pokemon with two abilities so good I can never make up my mind on which one I want. Intimidate is the immediate threat, while Moxie has huge potential if it can get started up. But, you know, they're both great, so let's just get past that. Ground Dark is an interesting type with two immunities and good offense. It comes with some of the better attack and speed that we've seen up to this point, and it'll continue to develop those stats as it goes along. But it also has some decent bulk when it's fully evolved too, so I don't want to discount that either. This is already shaping up to be a huge positive, but it gets even better when it learns Crunch and even Earthquake naturally, plus has some good TM compatibility. But there is one catch to, well, catching it. <laughs> Make sure it's level 15 exactly. If it's higher level than that, it'll be stuck with Assurance for an attacking move, whereas level 15 Sandiles come with Bite instead. I have no idea why they gave it an awesome move at a low level and a crummy move at a higher level, but they did. It's also the only ground dark type in the game, so points for originality. Second is Darumaka. It's okay to start out with 90 attack and being a decent bit tanky. Hustle also causes it to hit well whenever it works out, but hey, not much of anything special here, right? Oh, what am I kidding? Darmanitan, man! Some men just wanna watch the world burn with the almighty length of their fiery eyebrows, and that's what this is. At level 35, Darumaka evolves into one of the most powerful Pokemon you will find. Attack tied with Conkelder. Great HP to let it be tanky, and good speed for what it is. As if 140 attack was not strong enough, its ability becomes sheer force. Explaining exactly how that works, if a move has any positive secondary effect, like a move that does damage but can also have a chance of burning, the secondary chance turns to 0%, in exchange for the power increasing by a whopping 30%. Usually, I try to not primarily focus on just evolution so I can talk about what you're getting from the start, but Darmanitan is just so tough that it's impossible to recommend Darumaka without singing all the high praises of that evolved form. Whether you want your adventure to go quickly or you just hate the world, I recommend this. It's a good Pokemon to use when you're angry. <laughs> There is a chance to catch Darmanitan later, but I actually recommend catching Darumaka as it is now for reasons we'll see then. And last, for all of you who wouldn't put on a damn belt and thought it was a great idea to show the whole world your underpants in the early 2000s, Scraggy is on your head. Well, actually, that's not much of an insult because Scraggy's good. <laughs> this is yet another Pokemon that takes forever to evolve, are you sick of hearing me say that yet, but is rewarding if it can get that far. It's a bulky attacker, and because of that, I like to imagine the justification for its low speed and good defenses is that it just struts down the battlefield with its pants dragon on the ground really slowly and has so much swagger and is unfazed by anything, but head cannons aside, it starts with headbutt, gets brick break at only level 20, and it gets crunch later on. The biggest reason to use Scraggy is that it gets high jump kick, which normally that does damage to the user when it misses, but when combined with the wide lens we just got, is a terrific move with almost no downside. Both of its abilities have potential, but I think Moxie is gonna be the one that most people choose. Do you wanna use it? Well, it comes down to whether you think you can wait for it to evolve and whether or not you can get past the fashion sense. During the montage, Haywire tried to learn Spark, a physical electric type move with 65 power and can also paralyze. It's a pretty decent move, and I think for at least right now, I do want to overwrite Quick Attack with it, just because it'll do more damage. Haywire can attack with either physical or special, and depending on the situation, maybe I'll prefer one over the other. In fact, yes, it should definitely hit harder, because we have five more attack than special attack, and Spark is five more power than Shockwave. Shockwave does have that nice effect that it cannot possibly miss, but I think just generally for raw power, Spark is going to be helpful to us for a little while going forward. And looks like ending things off, we get a scope lens by talking to this scientist, being brave, assuming that he's a trainer, but, you know, not all people are like that. It increases your chances of getting critical hits. I think maybe... oh boy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna reserve the... How do I want to go about this, actually? Because you're getting a buff to your water-type moves. You... okay, yeah, I, I don't want to... 
quick claws worthless on you. We'll give you the scope lens just because you're going to be going first a lot. And if you can get a critical and avoid taking damage altogether because you get a KO when you otherwise wouldn't, it's easily worth it. Find a revive right there. Also worth your time. And I think I have one trainer left. Yeah, I do. No way! I lost! Those stretched out O's are just one of my favorite pastimes. To turn a ridiculous idea into reality, science can make much more happen than everyone thinks. How poetic. And what do you say? Oh, a company tour? Or some pra Pokemon practice? Either way, I'm glad you came. I'm happy, so I'll give you these. Quick balls! One of the absolute most helpful items for timer balls, one of the absolute most helpful items as well. Yes, a quick ball if used early in a battle it has a very high chance of catching Pokemon. Oftentimes, you don't even have to weaken them at all if you want to catch anything with those. And timer balls, as every turn passes, they will uh, have a higher catch rate. Starting off as just a regular Pokeball and going up with time, I believe it caps at about times five it is. I'm not totally sure I'll put the exact calculations on screen if I'm wrong, as I always do, but they are extremely invaluable items. We can't even buy those yet, and I think it gives you five of each, if I'm not mistaken. No, three of each. Still damn good, though. I mean, why not? And I think... I don't know if I really need to go and fight the trainers that are up on that route, so I think instead we're just going to resume our tour of the city. I say as I run right past everything that we've been, though, but I want to go down... And show that, like Manhattan, there are many piers, obviously, referencing the area. Pan Sage, Pan Seer, and Pan Poor are Pokemon that evolve with special stones. Which Pokemon do you want to evolve? You can lie to him, and you can tell him whatever you want, just like that hold item lady back in Nacreen City. But there's no reason to lie to him unless you caught a monkey in Pinwheel Forest. We're not going to be running into any more stone evolutions for these stones. Pan Seer is the only time since Gen 1 that any Pokemon evolving with a Fire Stone was ever introduced. I said it'd be nicer to Pansir. Maybe a slightly more powerful body is just what it needs. In fact, it's exactly what it needs, because then it'll suck less at, well, everything. You might already know this, but I'll give you some advice. When a Pokemon evolves, it will learn be more powerful, but it'll learn slow be slower to learn a new move. Especially true of Pokemon that evolve with stones. Not really the case, buddy. That's terrible advice for anyone raising the elemental monkeys, because they straight up won't learn those moves ever. Stick your thumbs up and curl your fingers. This is a thumbs up. That means okay. In some places, it also means money. I don't know. I don't trust you. This area seems kind of seedy. It smells like there's a sewer entrance or something around here. I don't know. Maybe it's, I'm just crazy and it's just me, but I think I just want to get out of there. That is a helpful place to stop by at. And I guess uh, we've already been down that road, so how about we go down another road? This is Mode Street. Is the third street out of five called Median Street then? Ha ha ha, hurdy hurdy -er. Always wanted to say that one. If we go over this way, we have Studio Castelia. I'm not as good at, as of an artist as Berg, but I have a liking for paintings. Let me see, today I'd like to paint rock type Pokemon. Will you show me what kinds of Pokemon you have? Ooh, I'm very close, but no cigar on that. I think I'm gonna leave for a moment and see what I can do. That's what we call completion percentage. What, do you think I meant philanthropy? Ugh, you better appreciate this. This is the fourth, soon to be fifth time that I've had to run across this dang bridge to take care of something. There's only one rock type obtainable in the whole dang world right now, and it's all the way back in Wellspring Cave. You guessed right, it's Woobat. Can I just say for a moment while we're fighting this Pokemon? I want to bring up another great missed opportunity for merchandising that I can't believe they still haven't done to this day. Why in any name of any of the major common ancestors of Pokemon, have they not made a rock and roll a pencil sharpener? Just, why not? The hole in the middle of its face is hexagonal. It's the perfect shape for a pencil. Just, why would you not do that? It has little feet, you can stick suction cups on the bottom so it doesn't rock around too much or rog around too much, I guess in this case, if it's a motorized pencil sharpener, but I've asked myself that for years. My immediate thought, the first time I saw a rock and roll -a, was that they're totally gonna turn this thing into a pencil sharpener in the merchandise. And yet, it still hasn't happened to this day. 
Come on, somebody get on that. It's asking to happen. It's perfect. It's a design match made in heaven. Make a rock and roll a pencil sharpener, because it's probably the most pencil sharpening looking fictional character I have ever seen in my entire life. And I defy anyone to find any fictional character that looks more like a pencil sharpener than rock and roll. They were discovered a hundred years ago in an earthquake fissure. Inside each one is an energy core. I'm gonna imagine that's the battery to make the pencil sharpener work. Oh, I shouldn't complain too much. After all, it could have been a lot worse. He could have asked to see a dragon Pokemon, right? <laughs> yes, I will show you a rock type. What? I nicknamed it before I called the true sun complaining. <laughs> oh, you have that type. I am inspired. Thank you. As a token of my gratitude, which one would you like? Once a day, he will ask to see a certain type of Pokemon, and if you bring that to him, he will give you the Cherry Berry, which heals Paralysis. Chesta Berry, we've already obtained, heals Sleep. Peach Berry, we've already obtained, heals, uh, Poison. Rost Berry is new, that heals Burn. Aspera Berry heals Frozen Status. I think I care mo most about the... Pecha Berry. I was gonna say Rost because it's new and Burn is a lot more common than Freeze, but I'll take the Pecha Berry. Oh, you're the best. Please come back tomorrow, too. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Most likely not, because I only have to actually go over this one time. Currently, we exhibit works in the motif of Legend of Legends of the Unova region. Twin Heroes. Ideals and Truth. Soaring White Dragon. Black Lightning Bolt. A Lighting Black Dragon. White Flame. All names that we'll want to remember. You there! I was reserving the next time I said that just for you. It's been a while since I said that. We sell Castelia City's famous Castelia Cone here. But the owner closes the shop for the winter. Please come again whenever it, when it gets warm. This is our introduction of Seasons, a mechanic unique only to Unova, never been seen before or since. If you remember back to when I said that Pokemon don't change their encounter rates based on morning, day, and night, it's because they change based on seasons instead, but only for certain areas and that hasn't actually come up yet, so that's I have good reason for not bringing it up before this point. Seasons change a few things, including when the sun rises and the sun sets. They change once a month. I kind of feel like once a month is a bit steep because I can't say I've ever played this game for four months straight at a time. I think honestly if they changed every week or something like that, that would be a lot more reasonable and people would actually see the differences. The other thing that I don't really care for about seasons is that there's not four of them. There's two seasons. Winter and not winter. <laughs> In 99 out of 100 cases of Seasons doing anything, it doesn't really get any more complicated than that, and you can see that already with our first event that is exclusive to a Season in that it's closed for the winter, but not closed for any other months of the year. And letting you know up front, not hiding behind anything, so that I can show you all the little things that Pokemon Black and White have to offer, I am going to be shamelessly cheating the clock from here on out so that we can do all of these events. This stand is now very crowded, huh? Oh, here you can buy the dessert that everyone in Castilia City is talking about. But it looks like I got the last one. They're sold out for today. Try again on a different day. Oh, well. Yeah, the Castilia Cone being available here, it's a bit limited in that you can only buy it on certain times of the day. You kind of have to come early if you want to get it. It's after midnight right now, so it's not going to happen. Um, it would be a full heal if we could buy it, so it's not that important of an item. But I did at least want to show the first case of that being important for anything. If you want to change the clock yourself, change it to 11.59, start up the game, and let it tick over to midnight in-game. That is your best way of doing it. Now, we have explored Route 4, saw a ton of stuff up there, saw some great new Pokemon that you can already catch before challenging Berg. We explored more of the city, another road on it, the Battle Company, and just in general, got tons and tons of helpful items, as well as one helpful new friend. And next time on Pokemon Black and White, we are going to see even more of this city because holy crap, we are only a little over halfway of seeing all of it. Told you this was going to be a pretty lengthy endeavor. See you guys then.